And with that, I leave you with seven minutes for your questions. Um, so yeah, come at me. Should we still learn traditional AI? Absolutely. Uh, but what do you mean by learning traditional AI? Everything we're dealing with here isn't, hmm, it will be difficult for you to learn the mathematical and technical aspects of generative AI without learning traditional AI. So then I don't need to answer this question for you. Those of you who are talking about the leadership aspects, technology management, what you can use technology for. You have just asked me if, if I have a tool that can give me many right answers and many wrong answers to a particular question, do I still need to learn the tools that are more specific and deal with specific single right answer situations? Of course you do. You're, that would be your super weird way to hamstring yourself in terms of what kind of use cases you could look for. Um, you also should know about regular um, code, uh, traditional programming. It would be pretty weird to only know about, in fact, when you have people who seem to only know about generative AI and not about any of the others, run in the opposite direction. Super red flag. Uh, do not take advice from that consultant. Um, so yes, absolutely. And while you're at it, concepts around safety nets and security can go a long way or because you don't need to know everything yourself, make sure that you compose a team that knows those things. Okay, what else have I got here? Um, I have... Um, okay. Hi, Who's... Kelsey. Yeah, hi, Ramona. I just saw that the audio uh, can function, so I can ask questions like this. Yeah, that's what I thought you guys were going to do. I've, I've heard uh, Ethan Mollick uh, mentioning that most of the people he talked to, leaders, have spent less than 10 hours with the technology. So how can somebody like that be, be in a position to decide and, and, you know, talk strategy and all of that? So I would love to hear your take on this. And thank you. Sure, sure. Well, look, a leader is supposed to know how to build their bench and whom to take advice from and how not to have really daft expectations. So if you know nothing at all, keep those expectations super low. And uh, you know, don't let charlatans take advantage of you. I'll tell you a, a specific story. A team delivered more than 50% performance improvement from a generative AI application. And uh, this acquaintance of mine was telling me about it. And I went, what? You got that much? Wow. And the acquaintance was like, yeah, I know, right? Pretty cool. But we chose a really good use case that was really about toil reduction. Um, a lot of very boring, um, when people did it by hand, they would have to do a very boring lot of looking at something, pulling something out of what they were looking at, and then recording it and then summarizing it. And that was... That was not a great way to do things. And like, yeah, we got this incredible more than 50% productivity boost. Awesome, said I. Did you deploy it? No, because the executive who was sponsoring the project had promised executives higher in the food chain a close to 100% productivity improvement. And so the whole thing went through lots of anger. And um, let's say that... Um, reorgs were threatened because of extremely high expectations. So that's like someone gives you a billion dollars and you go, why isn't it $10 billion? What is wrong with you? What's wrong with you is I don't know where you're getting these wild expectations from. Probably all the people who are trying to sell you something who haven't bothered to hire an AI security engineer, but what ifs? you are supposed to build a bench of trustworthy people to take advice from. That's how a leader would do it. It is so, so easy to be sold a bill of goods. So everybody take a deep breath. Remember, just because you can build the thing doesn't mean it's useful. Just because you have built the thing doesn't mean your people will agree to use it. Doesn't mean that your IT department will be able to cope with the repercussions of it. 
Doesn't mean that you have the security to be able to deal with it. Doesn't mean that you have the investment in what goes wrong if it goes wrong loudly. And, uh, you know, you need your PR people to deal with the fallout, right? What are all the unanticipated consequences? Hey, you put something somewhere and you don't anticipate all the ways it can go wrong. You will discover them in practice. So just because you can do the first bit, just because you realize that on the individual level, the chat GPT can do some cool thing, doesn't mean it plays nicely in the organization. Uh, okay, let me see what else I got from you. How do you know that you're succeeding? Okay, te testing is really, really, really important. And I spend a lot of time talking about this in the longer course. I'm a uh, recovering statistician. I care a lot about testing. What I will say is it is bad enough to test. It's hard enough for your statistic folk to test the performance of a regular traditional AI system. It's already hard. There's one right answer. It's already hard. How do we even think about the, how do you test whether a chatbot produces good responses, produces good conversations? What is, what is a good conversation? We will find as leaders that we get, really have our faces shoved into, well, what isn't just a philosophical discourse, hmm, what is the nature of good? What does it mean for a conversation to be good? Can you answer that? Because how are you going to do a performance measurement of a customer facing chatbot? How are you going to check if things are still okay when there are different versions of the foundation model, when things have changed in production, right? If you can't articulate what you're looking for, how will you know if you got it? And so in some sense, when I think about what's going to go wrong most, it's less so the technology stuff, right? You can build a good technology bench and hopefully have sane, responsible people helping you out. But if you, the non-technical potentially leader of the project, or even technical, aren't able to articulate to yourself the boundaries between good operation and bad operation of a very complex system that has to play with a lot of other systems, that is where you will have problems. And that's what we're gonna spend a lot of that eight hour time talking about. Whereas who should actually implement? Again, building the bench is the game because it's not a one person job, but some things that will exclude you is if you cannot have a, a good productive conversation with senior leadership, you're probably not the right person because there are going to be hard conversations down the line that you're going to have to manage. And, uh, you know, like that situation with close to 100 versus over 50, you don't want your team fired over that. So. Uh, if all you are doing is the technical, that's not good enough. Um, if you are super gullible, I would also exclude you right off the bat. Um, we don't have great habits, digital habits of trust. We don't have good habits of um, knowing when to believe the vendors and when not to. We don't have good habits of bring in people who can actually test things. And the good people, when you bring them in, are going to ask you a question of what are you hoping to get before I can test whether you have gotten it. So people who do not have the ability to think clearly and articulate clearly are also going to have a problem. Then having some sense of the, the vendor ecosystem, what is likely to be um, underpriced with some continuity risk, but you know, you've probably got in large organizations, people helping you out with that kind of technical stuff. Um, very technical folks are a danger in the sense that they overfocus on the technology and they forgot, forget all about the context and the people and the problem that that technology has to exist in. Anybody who's starting with, we should do, you know, there's a cool AI gadget, let's plug it in somewhere, is a hazard. But on the other side, anyone who's like, We've got this, you know, the like glitter, glittery, bright eyed, like AI is going to solve all our problems is also not going to be a good person. But at the end of the day, it's a team. The team's got to have all the skills represented. Who's in charge? At that point, the one best at being in charge. Okay, and uh, that's it for me. I have a request for all of you. Nothing in this world is free. So by hanging out with me, 
um, you have received for zero dollars some content. And my price is, if this was useful to you, I ask that you become my sleeper agent. Because as you know, there is a lot of noise, there's a lot of bullshit on the internet. And so if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're like, hey, this person that I'm observing could really use some re-education. And you like shoot that little linky link in their direction. You let them know that, you know, there's a place they can come learn. Maybe your organization is doing this thing where they're like, we need to hire a global head of AI and we need to bring in the consultants and we need to spend all the money on AI. It's not going to cost them that big of a chunk of their budget, very little uh, to actually, you know, come to a place where we are practical about stuff, realistic. Uh, I'm neither a doomer nor an over-optimist. I'm just like, these are your things. <laughs> Do your best. Let me give you the tools that I can and let me help you think better. So if some people need a little brainwashing, I will bring my scrubby brush <laughs> and my soap bucket and uh, I will help. And so I very much ask that you, um, if you enjoyed yourself here, just keep me in mind for the future. Okay, and with that, uh, goodbye, everyone. It was fun to be here. See you again soon, I hope.